so guys welcome to our channel once again in today's video on our biology jump exam revision series we're going to be solving some repeated practice questions on biology jump so in short to stay till the end of this video because this is very important for you to excel in your jump biology this year so we are going to solve 20 questions in this video and that's on the topic sense organs so let's start with the first question here we have a diagram the question here says the structure labeled i is a chemoreceptive b photosensitive c radiosensitive and d tactile so guys the answer to this question is option d tactile it is tactile because it is sensitive to touch. If it was sensitive to chemical, it would have been chemoreceptive. If it was sensitive to light, it would have been photosensitive. If it was sensitive to radiation, it would have been radiosensitive. But guys, this structure here, labeled I, is the vibrissa and it is sensitive to touch. So, hence, it is tactile it's question number two the part of the mammalian ear responsible for the maintenance of balance is the a perilymph b cochlear c ossicles d pinna so guys the answer to this question is option a and that's perilymph the perilymph is actually the fluid that is between the scalar tympani and scalar visibly of the cochlea so that fluid actually has a function in balance but guys maintenance of balance in the ear is not solely on this there is also another structure known as the vestibular apparatus and this vestibular apparatus actually has three semicircular canals which help in maintenance of balance and posture so guys it's important for you to know this but then the perilymph here also has a function in balance so out of these options the correct answer here is option a and that's the perilymph question number three says the mammalian a is divided into dash parts a4, B5, C3, D2. So guys, the mammalian ear is actually divided into three parts. And that's the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear comprises of the pinna and the auditory meatus. That's the ear passage. Whereas the middle ear consists of the three bones known as the ear ossicles. So guys the outer ear is actually separated from the middle ear by the eardrum or the tympanic membrane we also have the inner ear the inner ear is comprised of the vestibular system and the cochlea so the ear is actually made up of three parts like i said and that's the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the correct answer to this question is option C. It's question number four. The question says, the structure of the ear that is responsible for balancing is the A, pinna, B, auditory nerve, C, semicircular canals, and D, fenestra ovalis. So guys, the answer to this question is option c and that's the semicircular canals the semicircular canals are actually a part of the vestibular apparatus and they help in maintenance of balance and posture so guys the answer to this question is option c let's look at the next question guys and that's question number five it says the ability of the eye to focus on both near and distant objects is termed a image formation b accommodation c refraction 
D, hypermetropia. So guys, the answer to this question is option B, and that's accommodation. Accommodation is the ability of the eye to focus on both near and distant objects. Let's look at the next question, guys, and that's question number six. The question says, which of the following eye defects is caused by the inability of the eye to focus light on the retina? So, we have option A, myopia, option B, glaucoma, option C, cataracts, option D, astigmatism. So, guys, the answer to this question is option A, and that's myopia. When the eye is unable to focus light, on the retina it's actually as a result of either myopia or hypermetropia and when it is myopia it means the light is focused in front of the retina and not on the retina when it is hypermetropia means the light is focused behind the retina or at the back of the retina so guys there's no hypermetropia on these options here and there is only myopia here. So the answer to this question is myopia. The light is unable to focus light on the retina in these eye defects. So, so the question number seven says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. The question here says, the structure labeled I is the A, malleus, B, steps, C, hammer, and D, Inkles. So guys, the correct answer to this question is option B and that's steps. So if you look at this diagram well, you will see that this is the last bone in the ear ossicles, the one that directly has contact to the fenestra ovalis, that's the oval window. So this is the bone that maintains contact to the oval window the the bone of the middle ear that maintains contact to the oval window and that's the steps so these steps is actually the smallest bone in the middle ear so you can see that this bone here is maintaining contact to the oval window that leads to the inner ear so that's the steps bone so question number eight says which of the following explains why it is so difficult to see with dim light? A. Little light reaches the retina and so the cones may not be stimulated at all. B. Dim light causes the pupil to close up so that not much light enters the eye. C. The choroid reflects on the light that enters the eye. D. Initially, the eyes cannot operate in dim light. So guys, the answer to this question is option A. Little light reaches the retina and so the cones may not be stimulated at all. So guys, we know that there are two photoreceptors in the eyes and they are the rods and the cone. The rods actually are used to see colors that they are the color photoreceptors, whereas the cones actually see shades of gray and white. So guys, if enough light does not reach the cone, some of or most of the cones may not even be stimulated at all. And this can result in difficulty in C. Question number nine says, the organ which is sensitive to light in euglena is the A. Eye spots, B. Flagellum, C. Gullet, D. Chloroplast. So, guys, the answer to this question is the eye spots. The eye spots or the photoreceptor in the euglena is actually the part of the euglena that is sensitive to light. Let's look at the next question, and that's question number 10. The question says, which of the following statements about short sight is not correct a the cornea of the eyeball is too curved b the images fall in front of the retina c the eyeball is too short d it can be corrected by using concave lenses so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's 
the eyeball is too short so guys in short sight one is not able to see distant things so well or you might have blurred vision while looking at distant objects whereas you can see closer ones so well and that's as a result of the fact that the light focuses in front of the retina and not on the retina so in this situation or in this condition the corner of the eyeball might be too curved and that will result in image forming before the retina that's in front of the retina so option a is actually associated with short sight so the images also fall in front of the retina option b is also associated with short sight but then option c the eyeball is too short so this option is not associated with short sight because if the eyeball is too short actually the light will be focused behind the retina and that's not a feature of short sight so guys in this situation the correct answer to this question is option c question number 11 which of the following statements about the tongue is true a the tongue plays a key role in filtering blood in the circulatory system b the tongue is responsible for producing saliva c the tongue is a muscular organ involved in taste perception d the tongue is primarily involved in the process of respiration so guys the answer to this question is option c because the tongue is actually a muscular organ that is involved in taste perception the tongue actually has um, taste receptors embedded in it and it's a muscular organ these taste receptors help to sense tastes like sweet taste sour taste salty taste bitter taste and umami so guys the answer to this question is option c so let's look at the next question and that's question number 12. the question says when a person moves from a dark room into bright light the pupils become a smaller b larger c white d red so the correct answer here is a and that's smaller this is the mechanism that the pupil uses to protect the retina from excessive light flooding the retina so when you move from a dark room to a, a bright room the pupils actually get smaller in order to reduce the amount of light that gets to the retina so guys let's look at the next question and that's question number 13 the question says hygrometer is used to measure a light intensity b turbidity c relative humidity d pressure so guys the answer to the question here is option c and that's relative humidity so let's look at the next question question number 14 which of the following parts of the tongue does not correspond to the taste indicated against it a side indicated against sour b teeth against sweet c back for sour and d center for salt so guys the answer to this question is option c that's back for sour actually the back of the tongue is indicated for bitterness and not sourness so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's pack for sour the sour taste is actually most concentrated at the side of the tongue so note that this does not entail that these parts of the tongue are specifically associated with these tastes rather it entails that the taste buds here are more concentrated with these taste receptors specifically at these areas in the tongue so the taste receptors dominating the side of the tongue are the sour taste receptor for the tip of the tongue it is sweet for the back of the tongue it is bitterness for the center it is salt so guys the correct answer to this question is option c so let's look at the next question that's question number 15. the question says use the diagram below to answer the question that follows the part labeled ii is the a ear ossicles b 
internal auditory meatus, C, middle ear, D, fenestra ovalis. So guys, the answer to this question is option A, and that's ear ossicle. So you see the part labeled II, that's the middle ear, and it comprises of three bones. These three bones are the ear hammer, or the malleus, the incus, and finally the steps. So these three bones are known as the ear ossicles. So let's look at the next question. The question says the parts which function together to bring about hearing are labeled A, I, 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 and I, V, B, I, 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 V, and V, I, C, I, 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 and I, V, D, I, V, V, and V, I. So guys, the correct answer to this question is option C, and that's I, 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 and I, V. This is a result of the fact that sound has to be transmitted from the outer ear. It moves through the auditory meatus, and that's the part labeled I. That's the that's the ear passage, the auditory meatus, and then from the ear passage, it passes the eardrum and gets to the eye eye, and that's the ear ossicles, that's the three bones making up the ear ossicles, and then the sound passes from there and then gets to eye eye eye. So the eye 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 is this fenestra ovalis, and that's the oval window that leads to the cochlea. So, guys, from the fenestral ovalis, that's the oval window, it now passes and gets to the IV, which is the cochlea, and that's where you have the hair structure that helps to integrate the sound and then send it to where it will be interpreted in the brain via the cochlear nerve. So, guys, Let's look at the next question, question number 17. The question says, the eye defect that arises because the cornea is not curved smoothly is A, presbyopia, B, short-sightedness, C, long-sightedness, D, astigmatism. So guys, the correct answer to this question is option D, and that's astigmatism. Astigmatism is actually caused as a result of unequal curvature of the cornea or lens so when the cornea is not curved smoothly when it's not having an equal curvature like a smooth curvature it results in astigmatism and this in this situation the light rays are actually brought to focus at different points on the retina so it it is not focused on the fovea of the retina so in this situation one might have a blurred vision so guys let's look at the next question use the diagram below to answer this question the eye defect illustrated is a hypermetropia b myopia c astigmatism d cataract so guys looking at this we have an eye defect we have this image here indicating an eye defect and the correction so looking at this the first one which is the eye defect you'll see that the light is brought to focus behind the retina so you see that this crossed the retina and it's focused behind the retina so this should tell you that this situation is hypermetropia guys if it was in front of the retina it would have been myopia but when it's behind the retina it is hypermetropia so guys when you look at the correction you see that a convex lens was actually used to correct this and that's a converging lens that makes the light to be brought to focus on the retina so looking at this correction you will see the light now being formed on the retina 
so guys take notes the light should be focused on the retina so if it is focused behind the retina it is hypermetropia if it is focused in front of the retina it is myopia so here is the correct option here and the answer to this question is hypermetropia so let's look at the next question guys question number 19 says when viewing an object that is close to the human eye the a ciliary muscles relax b eye lens become thin c eye lens becomes fat d suspensory ligament becomes taut so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's the eye lens becomes fat so when you are looking at a closer object the eye lens has to become fat in order to assume the shape of a convex lens and that's to con a converging lens what does the converging lens do it will converge the light it will actually bring the light to focus closer so if the lens becomes fat it actually functions like a convex lens and thereby making the light to focus correctly on the retina so guys the last question here question number 20 the question says short-sightedness can be corrected by lenses which are a plano concave b by convex c concave d convex so guys the correct answer to this question is option c and that's concave short-sightedness can be co corrected using concave lenses and that's the diverging lens so if we use a concave lens uh, that's a diverging lens the light can be diverged and then can be made to be brought to focus on the retina and that corrects the eye defects so guys this will be the end of this video if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not yet a subscriber also ensure to drop your questions on the comment section below if you have any question regarding this video don't also forget to share this video with your friends to enable us to reach out more viewers thank you for watching this video.